Hi there, welcome to this course on AWS Sumerian for beginners where you will learn about building 3D objects, AR and VR applications, environment settings right from the beginning. My name is Harshit and I am instructor for this class. Here in this class, you will learn about various tools and components of Amazon Sumerian and how you can import and export various objects using Blender 3D modeling and designing tool. Here in this course, you will learn to create and customize a scene in Amazon Sumerian. You will learn about creating entity and transforming uh, various properties such as position, rotation and scale. Moreover, you would also learn to import various assets and set material properties. You would be able to add material to your 3D objects to have a material finish such as metallic luster, uh, leather and other things. Moreover, you would also learn about detailed material properties where you would control various things. Here you would also learn about working with cameras, various types of cameras like orbital camera and other cameras, 2D camera, orthogonal camera and much more. Moreover, you would also learn with working with 3D lights such as point light, environment light, focus light and spotlight. Here after you have created a scene working with 3D models, added materials, you will learn to save and export uh, the 3D objects as GITF format. This format can be used with various 3D modeling tools such as Autodesk Maya and Blender. From Blender you can also export uh, object file that can be used in Sumerian. You will learn about all of these in this course. So if you are curious to learn these skills on Amazon Sumerian, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi friend, welcome to this lesson. We are going to learn about getting started with AWS Sumerian. That is a popular service that allows you to do multiple things that you are going to learn in this lesson. So just move to the Sumerian option from the various services available on AWS. Just go to the AR and VR category, you would find the Sumerian. And here, this is the dashboard for AWS Sumerian. Here, as you can see, uh, there are various options like uh, you can create a new scene from scratch by hitting this plus icon then you can use some existing templates uh, that are there like a character animation character and you can have augmented reality application the default lightning or you can got the product configuration you can have the speech and gesture these are various templates that can be used to create a scene so depending on the situation you can use them and if you are uh, starting from scratch, it's better to just move to the creating a new scene in order to get familiar with the dashboard and various consoles. So here you on the left hand side, you got various options like projects, you got the trash. So when you create multiple projects, it will be available here on the AWS console. So what is Sumerian? Sumerian is basically a set of browser based tool. So it runs on your browser, it runs on the cloud. So it won't affect your GPU. So if you are running on a low GPU machine or low CPU machine, you can still render a lot of 3D models. You can create VR, virtual reality and augmented reality application. So let us create a new scene here and just move it to here. It will take uh, some time to load and here you got this dashboard. So dashboard looks very hectic. It consists of a lot of options that you can do. If you are new to 3D world or 3D modeling, you have never used softwares like Blender, you could get a little bit overwhelmed. But if you are a little bit familiar with this thing, you won't find it difficult to understand because it is far more easier as compared to the complicated Blender and other softwares. They are full engines and this is some uh, that allow you to do some things on the cloud. So here uh, you can create a new entity by hitting this plus icon that will allow you to create various objects, 3D models, uh, you can have lightning and other things. On the left hand side you got entities panel and assets panel and on the right hand side you got various properties. 
you will be learning one by one each and every things in the coming lessons so don't worry at the moment just focus on getting familiar when you create a new entity you can create multiple kinds of entities such as 3d primitives 2d shapes uh, other custom things uh, lightning there are various types of lightning uh, you can create multiple cameras to have a multiple angle view of the field and so on so here we got the point light directional light spotlight and you got multiple types of cameras there are basic 3d primitive shapes like cuboid uh, cylinder sphere torus and much more torus can also be called as a donut shape and you can add it we have added our torus and we can move it in three different directions x y z because it is a 3d asset and we can move it anywhere we want so you can move this handle just left click and just drag wherever you want to do or if you want to customize by providing the numerical value for three different coordinates you can also do in the property panel on the right hand side just move to the transform panel and here you can find x y and z coordinates for direction rotation like orientation like 45 degree if we change the x axis to 45 degree it will just uh, rotate in this angle when we change it to 90 degree it flipped in that way the same way you can change it and the last option is, is scalability right now it is scaled to 100 percent like 111 you can change it to 200 percent 300 percent something of your value and you can scale it in three different coordinates that means if you want to stretch it just to the x-axis you can stretch or you can flip it to the any direction you want you can also flip it in the combination of axis like you can flip it over x and z axis you can also have the negative flip like minus 90 degree it will change it by default everything is set to origin and you can move it the way you want so like if we scale it uh, in this manner like a 1.5 times the x-axis and 2 times the y-axis and then we can have the z-axis uh, sometimes then you can have this stretch and elongate it you can also provide values in decimal format so it will have a minuscule application so you got the default shape like uh, donut and or torus and you can stretch it the way you want so now it looks like a donut we have elongated and customized it a little bit in the same way you can do with multiple shapes and you may be wondering here uh, how you can create complex shapes like a human face you can use a combination of various shapes and create any complex form later on so this is how you get to create a new scene in sumerian uh, you know what is sumerian uh, it, it can be used for vr ar and 3d application development and this is how so you are going to learn more in the coming lessons keep learning hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about various material properties and how you can add materials and import other assets in sumerian so let's get started in the previous lesson we have created this donut shape by going to the entity and we have customized various transformation properties moreover if you want to customize it further you can change its direction change its orientation providing three values for different coordinates x y and z like uh, if you want to make it uh, minus 90 degree you can do so you can change it to 45 degree any degree percentage you can customize you can change its scale and other things and here you got the option for materials currently uh, we have this classic material selected and we can change the color so this is the default material but if you want to customize it make it more realistic it is better to use other materials so if you are new to material properties uh, material is uh, anything is the physical form uh, you have seen uh, with this animated movies cgis and other things there you have feel that it looks completely real so our donut can be made into a shiny object it should look like a food 
so we can have uh, some other texture like leather texture we can use a combination of other things so like uh, you got different objects that can be created in sumerian any 3d modeling uh, it could be glassy it could be light emitting it could be simple casual t-shirts or other things you can have a plastic surface metallic surface and so on after you click the import asset option you can import various uh, by default available materials uh, you got to choose from, from here so there are different caricatures characters various environments you can choose and you can choose a material package so this is uh, by default available in sumerian so no need to add any third party thing just select the material we will go with the pbr material pack for walls and other things it can uh, be used to create leather kind of objects and other things it is used uh, combination of things you can find the asset details here and you can just import you can have multiple materials imported in the project as well so no need to worry after you add it you will find it in this asset panel uh, there are various materials being said and it prompt you to that uh, it has an imported material so just you need to drop a particular material into the material section just place it there and it would be added so here just go to the material property just select a material you want to have uh, like walls or leather place it over there and it is applied over the object then you can try different materials like you can have uh, various uh, like metallic thing you can have a rough surface like leather okay so depending on the thing you want to create say if you want to have some object that is wooden you can use the wooden texture if you want your object to make it shiny you can use the metallic you can have the leather texture so it doesn't look like a donut right now it looks like a cushion or some leather object it can be used to create furniture or sofa and so on so this is how materials are very cool you can also customize it and some things that you can create using materials sometimes they are not uh, easy to do in real life as well like you can have a glassy rough surface so it will be glassy and it will be rough, rough as well you can have a matte finished metal surface and so on here it is you can moreover drop other materials as well uh, you can note here that uh, all the materials properties assets are suffixed as underscore mat so you will be easy to identify it when you have multiple assets like you can have imported uh, images vector graphics other 3d objects you can have the color properties you can have sound you can have anything else after you have applied a material to an object you can change the color you can change the roughness you can change the specular things you can have the ambience you can change the cavity you can change the opacity you can change the blending option say you can have multiple materials as well you can change the blending there are various options like metalliness so you can make it more smooth you can make it rough okay so you can change the strength value for the strength so now it's look like some uh, shiny object it has a copper finish with this color then you can have the roughness properties you can customize it change the roughness you can change other properties as well you will learning more about various material properties later on in the coming lessons till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about some advanced material properties in sumerian so let's get started in the previous lesson we have added some material packs uh, we have added some material layers and now we can customize it further so just move to the material and various properties on the right hand side you would find various options such as roughness you can change the texture 
and strength of the roughness you can have the opacity the blending mode you can set the cavity you can change the strength of cavity you can go to the opacity if you want to make it enable you can have the opacity you can make it transparent completely so if you reduce the strength it will become a little bit transparent if you increase the strength 100 percent opacity you cannot see through it so it is better to have a combination of everything and for blending you got various options like no blending transparency blending you could have other blending options as well you can clear coat so it will look like some uh, glassy or a sprinkle of powder effect kind of things so you can have it so this is a food and in order to make it vibrant you can have it then you can go to the curling option you can curl the face uh, the front corner you can it will change the orientation uh, a kind of thing and then you can make it back so it will flip over if you want you can change the depth properties you can change the shading you can have other things as well so for the shading you can make it flat shading so it will look like some game object or if you want to have this thing if you want to make it completely rough you can change this option as well you can choose a wireframe model so it will just produce the structure say you can consider this as a building material so if you want to show the wireframe can be used in various things it can be considered as a skeleton or overall then you can have a wrap feather or wrap other things wrap amount and so on so if you increase the wrap amount it will make it more vibrant otherwise it will be it will look like a dull object so it depends so if you want to have some feathery things like uh, dark portions on the corners you can reduce this amount and if you want to highlight everything you can highlight as well then you can always customize the color to make it the way you want so choosing a material is one thing and customizing it customizing various material properties is completely different story because you need to have some flavor so uh, it is just like cooking where uh, you have uh, spices various spices you can if you are new to some cuisine you can sprinkle a little bit salt you can customize it a little bit flavor so in the same way you can choose to have uh, some kind of opacity and different blending modes you can try various things and with a combination of things whatever looks better you will go ahead with that thing so don't worry if you won't get uh, your final product in one shot you should take some time to choose the material because material selection is a different thing it is also like a jewelry so there are various types of jewelries in the market and if you are shopping a jewelry for your friend you would you should take some time to fine tune it so here we can add other materials as well you can have other entities like here we have added a cylinder and we can use this cylinder to customize it further uh, you should place it in the desired location and we can move using the handle we can customize it the same way we have customized our donut so we can place it anywhere uh, you can stretch it so like we have customized the e scale property we have made it two times on the x-axis and we can change it further so the way you want say so if you want a long cylinder narrow cylinder you can change it along the y or z axis if you want to make it little bit thick but not narrow a wideness uh, you can customize the x properties uh, depending on the orientation as well so keep learning and keep moving ahead you will be learning more in the coming lessons hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about cameras in sumerian so let's get started previously we have created a scene where we have added two different entities for 3d objects donut and cylinders placed uh, side by side we have added materials 
Uh, so now you are familiar with how to set up materials and now in this lesson we will learn about cameras so by default we got one camera that is created when you create a scene that is called as a default camera you can find its property on the right hand side you can take a snapshot of a scene and it will be saved as a photo then you can uh, change the properties, the transformation properties. You can move this camera anywhere. So moving a camera is a different thing and moving an object is a different thing. So you can change your camera location just like uh, you do in a real life. Uh, in order to take a perfect shot, uh, there are two ways. Either you can change your camera angle or you can move the subject. So this is the same way when you can move the camera. Then uh, you can also set up what is being displayed in front of you. Like currently it is being displayed as a full shading. And you can change it to wireframe, normal or combination of full shading plus wireframe. So depending on the situation where you want uh, your object to be displayed. So for example, uh, if you want to have a wireframe model, sometimes it is required. You can choose that thing. Otherwise, if you want a full shading, you can have or you can have a flat illustration and other things. So this is what is being displayed. You can consider it as a different kind of cameras like a low resolution camera, a thermal camera that which is various wavelengths, night vision camera or other things. So just in the real life, there are multiple kinds of camera. In Sumerian, you can also create multiple cameras. So. Uh, you can move to create entity if you want to create a second camera, third camera and so on. Uh, on the bottom corner you will find these kind of cameras. So let us first create an orbit camera. So what is an orbit camera? Orbit camera is a kind of camera uh, that provides you an orbit control. So you can move it in a circular orbit uh, that will allow you to can move the camera. So like you can consider it as a Hollywood kind of cameras that move over a ramp. So there's something placed in the center and a camera just revolves in an orbit around the subject. So you can create this kind of camera. Then there's a fly camera, you got a fixed camera, you got a 2D camera. Okay, so by default anything that you see on the screen it is a default camera and once you create uh, another camera it won't be set as a default camera it will be as treated as a secondary camera and you can always switch over this thing so if you are creating a 3d model and simulating certain things if you want to create a 2d animation you can use multiple cameras you can change to b rolls and c rolls or a different camera when you want and uh, the main scene that consist of the wireframe and full shading of this model is being shown as a default camera and on the bottom left corner uh, you can find it being displayed in the small square box you can move this camera you can in direction where you want to move you can change its location you can set various properties on the right hand side you got you can use the handles or you can provide the value and in this uh, small square icon you can see whatever is being displayed from this camera it is visible so so now if you look at this as uh, footage from this orbit camera you realize that the donut is not exactly connected to these three these two uh, green circles it is actually very far away so in this angle we don't see that thing but using that camera we can find it so orbit camera can rotate on uh, three different orbits x y and z so you can use it okay so here we got this angle so you can uh, watch your object on multiple angles so there are, there are various use cases for adding a camera uh, the first use case I already explained if you are recording something like creating an animated movie or VR applications or AR applications, you need multiple angles that can that user can view things over and again. And then uh, there is also a use of a camera for you to create something. 
So like uh, if you're creating a model 3d model or something for vr or ar application you must uh, be aware how it will look from a different camera angle so you create multiple cameras for your comfort while creating this thing so you can set it then you we create uh, another camera that is a 2d camera it will allow you to have a 2d view over the subject it won't display things in a 3d it will have just two coordinates x and y although it can move in three coordinates it will provide you the vision in two coordinates you can also change the properties you can move it using the handles and so on then there is a fixed camera that is a stationary camera it will show you the things in that way 2d camera is also used for also uh, used as an orthographic camera with 2d pan rotation control so you can move it in this way you can always create multiple cameras like you can create multiple orbit cameras you can create multiple fixed camera if you want to create thousands of cameras in your scene you can create you can create hundreds of cameras but it won't be required but if you got a created a big thing like you are creating marvel universe or something like that you need multiple camera angles so one camera would not follow you everywhere you can move it so it's two different cameras so like if you create an entire city and somebody is running over the street it would be better to place multiple cameras over some distance the camera won't run with you so this would be very complex but uh, things are same whether you are using a creating a complex build up or you are just starting up this thing so just play with the camera you just set uh, in various angles you can take screenshots you can save it and more over in the coming lessons you are going to learn more about other properties such as lightning and things keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about lights in sumerian so let's get started previously you learned about the camera and material properties and right now just learn about the light properties let's create a spotlight you can create uh, three different types of lights in Sumerian. You got the point light, directional light, and spotlight. All these lights have various properties and various behaviors that you need to understand in order to use the lights. So this is a spotlight. So a spotlight has a cone kind of a structure where your light is placed on the top of the cone and uh, the light is focused as a cone. It is not focused as a beam, cylindrical beam, it is focused as a cone. So, uh, so you will find where the light has an impact based on the material you use. If you use the metallic material like a copper material or some glassy material, it will have more reflection. Whereas if you have a matte texture or something like leather, it will have less reflection. So you can place, choose a combination of light as well as material to make your scene look like you, whatever you want. So here uh, you can go to the properties. You can apply the same transformation properties to move it around here and there. And you can create multiple lights as well. So let us create a point light. Point light is like a sphere uh, that emits light in all the directions. You can consider it as a sun sun emits direct light in all the direction so here it is this is the point light the cfl or the led bulb in your uh, room that is currently there it can be considered as a point light although there's some area where it won't emit light but mostly in all the angle it emits so you can place it anywhere um, that you want you can change the shading option and you can have multiple lights as well so just like uh, in your room or in a hall, you have multiple light sources. There are various spotlights, there are various backlights, there's various direction light and point lights. You can add multiple lights to the scene to make it more attractive and more vibrant. You will have light on the angles that you want to prefer. Then in the light properties, you got various things. You can change the type of the light. Even after placing, you may decide that you want to convert a point light to directional, you can change and you will have a feel how it will look. 
then you can change the color of the light by default it is set to white color you can make it of uh, any different color like some dark color or bright color you can make it violet you can make it red you can make it yellow depending on the thing you want so like uh, if you want to have a warm light you can make it a yellow or some warm color if you want to have a uh, dark impact you can use the blue or violet color then you can change the intensity of light you can also uh, move various things you can change the intensity of light to make it more uh, vibrant you can increase the brightness of the light then you can change the specular you can change the range of the light so here we if we change the color of light to say violet color or blue color it will have this kind of impact and right now its intensity is set to 10 10 means 10 times the intensity if it is set to 1 that means 100 percent intensity hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about how you can save uh, your file in sumerian and how you can export it so let's get started after you have created a 3d model in sumerian it is better to save it and export it into a format that can be used to view it across the web or it can be used for uh, 3d modeling software such as blender so that you can polish it further just go to the scene on the top left corner and here you can find the export option so here uh, you can select from this dialog box the properties that you want to include in the format include in the export so it is advisable to uh, select the cameras and light because if you won't have a camera and a light nothing would be visible although everything would be there then you can leave the unused asset unchecked and you can select the image based lightning unchecked because these are not important component it will just increase the size of the file but if you want to have it you can have it when you are sure you just export it so export to GITF and it will take some time uh, and when it is done you can use it and view it using a GITF viewer online there are multiple GITF viewers uh, what is a GITF format it is a recent format uh, it is a standard format for 3d uh, scenes and models so we are, have created 3d scene and 3d models uh, GITF file can be used in various ways uh, it can be used as a GITF format or GLB format, GIB format and these files can refer external binary and textured resources so we have added the material property and it can refer it and these formats can be self contained and can be directly embedded into the binary buffer so this format is very much compatible across the web and you can find it and it is compressed in the zip file so you can extract it so once we have created we have downloaded this file and we have extracted it in our system and when we have to import it on other software such as blender we will locate to this GITF root file so this is the main file root.gitf format and then it will be used just open a GITF uh, viewer here I am using a GITF viewer there are multiple other options as well just go to this folder that we have extracted and select all the files and everything would be included so you can view it easily anywhere so you can develop in Sumerian AWS Sumerian cloud and then you can share it with your friends who can view it so if you're working on a project and uh, work with your teammates you can share this thing this is snapshot as a weekly sprint or something like that so you can just zoom in zoom out pan using mouse scroll or you can on the right hand side you've got some properties that you can use like display lightning cameras and performance you can control various things you can control the background uh, you can change the background here like for example you have a 3d object you can place it anywhere so it will act like uh, an augmented reality or virtual reality application so you might have played pokemon go so how does a pokemon appears uh, pokemon is a 3d object uh, that could be made using software such as uh, sumerian or blender 
and it gets embedded with the real environment that you see with your mobile camera so you can create a similar kind of simulations here so this will be how it looks you can change it uh, to any other solid background color uh, it will look like a VR application so uh, there's a difference between VR and AR application you might be already familiar with so augmented reality is adding bringing some 3d uh, component in the real world it embed your experience so it consists of the real world as well as virtual world it's a combination of both while in virtual world there's no real world and you are completely immersed into the virtual world so you can use it to create this thing and then you can also use this 3d models to create uh, 3d animation and other things as well on other softwares so you could work in various ecosystems like for example you create a 3d asset in sumerian then later on you can export it to blender to create a 3d scene 3d animation or you can use it to create vr applications and so on so it can be used various ways you can zoom in zoom out and other things so this is how you export a file from sumerian into gitf format next in the coming lesson you will learn how you can work with gitf format in blender so keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about importing the project file that we have created in sumerian into the blender 3d modeling software so let's get started so if you open the blender the first time you will find this background this dashboard here uh, if you're new to blender you would find it little bit overwhelming but just focus on the aspects that I would cover. So you have to just go to file import and GITF format. So just select the GITF file. Uh, we have created a GITF file from Sumerian and you just need to import it. When it is it's, uh, opening, you have to locate the root.gitf file from the project panel that we have created. Just go to there and here it is. This is the root file. It will load everything else connected to this thing. And here this is the main structure. Now you can move to other tabs such as modeling tab, uh, sculpting tab, the layout, rendering, UV lightning, uh, other tabs. So what is the purpose of using blender here like in sumerian you got uh, limited resources limited things to do you can edit light camera materials uh, shapes entities and other things uh, with blender you got a uh, full control over anything and everything you could uh, create notes you could create animation you could create motion graphics you can record the video uh, if you want you can sculpt each and every layer you can make it just like an animated movie the fine with the perfection you can create vfx visual effects and other things so if you want to get into the complex thing you can use this thing if you are low on gpu it is better to work on sumerian online on aws if you have a good gpu and you have the blender skills you know how to do sculpting modeling and other things you know about nodes uh, motion graphics you can leverage your skills and use this file otherwise you can also customize it a little bit further or in the same way you can also use the gitf for file format in uh, other softwares like uh, maya and other 3d modeling softwares you can use it there as well so here uh, we are currently into the shading tab and on the right hand side you would find various layers and other options properties that you can customize and this is our object it may look a little bit different from what you find it in sumerian just because you got a different camera angle here the camera angle and lightning properties has been little bit changed you can you would be able to open it and uh, after you finish your work in blender you can always convert it and export it for sumerian so you can check different options uh, along with a GITF file 
Blender allows you to import various 3D formats such as FBX or Wavefront, Extensible 3D, Special Vector Graphics SVG or Colada and other formats as well. So you can use them here. You can perform various operations just like transformation operations and other things in Blender. You can perform various editing here. Currently, I'm not doing this thing. Uh, you can just have a better control. So after you create uh, some scene in Sumerian, you can just export it there. I exported it in Blender and you can edit it to create a 3D model. Then after that, you can convert it to object file and go to Sumerian and then you can uh, just use it to create other applications. Just need to go to file export and here just select the object file uh, dot wave front. You can also save this project as a blender format so that you can work later on this. You can use a blender to perform various operations to do some kind of editing that is not possible in Sumerian because Sumerian has some limitations and blender is a wide open. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about importing object file in Sumerian. So let's get started. Before importing, we just need to create a new scene from scratch or you can import in the existing scene. So let's create an scene um, and then we can import a file very easily by just going to the import asset option. So object file is generally created by 3D modeling software such as Autodesk Maya, 3ds Max or Blender or any other softwares. You can import that 3D object file that you have already created and you can use it in your existing project or you can create a new project. So here just need to go to browse option. You can also import files from the cloud or you can browse it on your system. So here I'm just locating the object file from my system and we'll just open it. So on the left hand side in the asset panel, you will find your object file being added. So by default, the environment lightning and the camera settings is being created once you create a new scene in Sumerian and you can add object file. You can add various object files. You can add multiple objects and you can also import files in the format such as FBX or other formats in Sumerian as well. After you have imported a scene, you can still go to continue to perform any operations that you want. You can scale it, you can rotate it, you can move it, you can add some material layer. You could do a lot of things. So for example, it is always advisable to move in a ecosystem where like you have a blender so where you can create advanced complex 3D shapes and then you can create object file and VX file in blender and then you can export it into the Sumerian and there you can add various materials because in Sumerian cloud service you can add various kinds of materials such as leather and other things it is directly connected to the cloud so you can easily do this thing a lot of rendering work can be done here. You can also import multiple files. You can edit them here. You can transform it. You can add camera. You can change the display mode. You could do a lot of things. So this is a plain object file. You can also import material files and other files in Sumerian. The flow is, is seamless generally. You create something in Sumerian, then you can export it to Autodesk Maya or Blender, work on some things there that is by default not available here. Like sculpting, sculpting is not available in Sumerian as of now. And you can do sculpting, uh, add some VFX and other things. You can record a video there in Blender and then you can export the file after sculpting into the Sumerian then you can have a material finish and you can create a scene and save it later on. 
Moreover, you could also integrate your Sumerian application with other cloud services on AWS uh, that can be used in the various things like if you can build some mobile application utilities or other services you can use you can use a database to display something and other things try to do model create multiple scenes you can use existing templates you can work on lightning camera and other properties the skill is also used in 3d modeling and other softwares it is overlapping thing so if you are already familiar with blender sumerian is easy for you and if you are just a complete beginner in sumerian you can use the same 3d modeling skills in blender and autodesk maya as well keep learning and keep moving ahead